Tuesday morning. It is also a crazy hair day because I have my hair appointment. I just arrived quite a bit early for, so I figured I'd vlog. I'll read a little bit, catch up on email. Yesterday was Monday. I mostly worked all day. I did about 11 hours of work and I, feel, I felt good about it. It was a good productive day. This morning I woke up a little earlier and I got 12 orders packed and they're dropped off at USPS. I'm excited for that. I'm feeling good about this week. I hope that continues. I have a lot of fun things coming up this week between book clubs and meetup, hair appointment. After my hair appointment I'm hoping to film a bunch of other videos that I've been meaning to do because my hair will actually look nice. I also want to finish more orders and finish a book that I'm reading. On audio, on my way to my hair appointment, I started The Do-Over by Suzanne Park, and that's really cute so far. Basically, it's this girl who graduated college 10 years ago. She applied for a job, and at the job, they told her she did not qualify because the college she went to says she never graduated. So she's going there to figure that out, and she finds out that she never graduated. That one's pretty good so far. It, like I said, it's cute. It's a find yourself type of book and I'm really enjoying that. I'm also reading two other romance type books so I think I'm getting a little burnt out from romance but I'm reading Practice Makes Perfect by Sarah Adams and Famous for a Living by Melissa Ferguson which is published today so if you're watching this it is out now. Both are cute, both are sweet. I'm just, I think I'm ready for a thriller. <laughs> I'm very much a mood reader. I'll read five to six books at a time so that I'm a mess when it comes to reading. But I'm hoping to finish both of those this week, particularly Famous for a Living, hopefully today, because it's published today and I'd like to have the review out on pub day. Basically, it's influencers who are famous for a living and there's romance and I don't wanna to give too much of that away. For Practice Makes Perfect by Sarah Adams, it is the companion book for When in Rome by Sarah Adams. You do not have to read them in order. They do a good job at being standalones, but they're also cute in order because you see more of the characters from When in Rome in Practice Makes Perfect. But like I said, they're romance, so they're pretty predictable either way. Uh, Practice Makes Perfect, you have the sister of a character from the first one and a bodyguard character from the first one, When in Rome and practice dating so that the sister who owns a flower shop can practice dating because she hasn't ever. You know where that goes, fake dating, there you go. <laughs> um, oh, this was so good. I did finish I Will Find You by Harlan Coben. I th that was so good. I read it within 24 hours, fast paced. It's just, I've only ever watched Harlan Coben's shows, so I was really excited to read one of his books. So I thank you to the publisher for giving me an advanced reader copy of it. And I'm sorry, I'm reviewing it late but it was so good. It's a suspense thriller, kind of psychological thriller. Essentially, this guy, you start right off the bat, in the middle of it, he's been in jail for five years, and his son is dead, but he didn't kill his son. However, he's been convicted for the murder of his son, and then he gets a guest for the first time in five years at the prison, and the guest kind of says, like, I don't think you did this and I'm not going to give too much away from there but it was so good I highly recommend it I'm going to be picking up more of Har Harlan Coben's books I totally butchered the name and everything on this so just refer to the picture that I have posted because that will say it I'm gonna go get my hair done and I'm so excited for it I only get it done every few months I know so it's it used to be, this is gonna look messy guys, but it used to be all blonde. I used to be outside a lot. I was a swim instructor, so it would naturally be really blonde. And then I started Grace by Shan and I don't work outside anymore, so it gets pretty brown. So I started getting it done blonde for my wedding and I just really liked it, so I'm gonna keep doing that. I leave for Greece soon and I would like to have the blonde hair for Greece. That's what I'm doing. I try not to get it done too often because I'm very, I trim my hair every six weeks. I don't do heat on it. I'm very protective of my hair. I have noticed a change in my self-esteem. I'm not someone who wears jewelry. I hardly ever wear my wedding ring. I don't have my ears pierced. I rarely wear makeup. I have always felt like comfortable with that. But as soon as I had my hair done, I felt my self-esteem kind of skyrocket. And I know that's so silly. I know my hair has nothing to do with who I am or how people think of me, but I felt better. And it's so silly, but I think a lot of you guys can uh, relate to that and it just feels good. So that's that's what I'm doing. I'm getting my hair done today and I can't wait for it. And I'll see you guys soon. I'll keep you updated. I've got a lot going on this week. I'm so excited.
again i always use the word so and excited a lot i'm gonna try and work on that for this vlog this week happy wednesday my hair is done she straightened it for me <clears throat> it's a little bit lighter with still like the brownish on top i just don't want to be full blonde or like platinum blonde i guess is the word Not what i want right now <laughs> Like I said earlier, I've never really done my hair before. I've only ever gone to Madison and she does a good job. And I got a trim, usually I cut it myself. It's nice to have an even trim. Usually you can't tell because I have curly hair. If it's uneven, no one notices because the curls are all uneven and they're all, all the curls have minds of their own. But when it's straight, it looks good. It's nice and even thanks to Madison. Well, like I said, it's Wednesday. Today was a big work day for me. I got out a bunch of orders. I helped make some sleeves. I'm getting ready meeting with one of my sewers on Friday and I'm going out of town this weekend. Lots of social events coming up so I've tried to do like 10 to 12 hour days on Monday and Wednesday this week as I have social events on certain days but with lots of works means lots of audiobooks. I did on Monday finish a few audiobooks pulling up my Goodreads. I can't keep up sometimes. If you're new here I do a lot of audiobooks. I have I'm at over 100 books for the year but I do a lot of audiobooks. That's not just sitting down and pure reading time because there's just not enough time for me to do that with running working and I'm also trying to write a book I don't know if I'll ever publish it but I just want to be able to write a book and know that I did it at least once in my life whether or not it is shared with the world anyways so I have a lot going on and I also travel a lot with the company EF Ultimate Break which you guys have seen some of my videos on if you're watching this and you're interested in traveling with EF Ultimate Break there is a discount code below their travel company that ranges for ages 18 to 35 and it's just a fun way to travel they have good prices their trips include flights hotels uh, tour directors, transportation, most things, and they go all around the world. So I have an EF trip coming up in a few weeks. I'm going to Greece and I'm very excited for that to the book. On Monday, now that I have my Goodreads open, I read Inheritance, a memoir of genealogy, paternity, and love by Danny Shapiro, which was recommended by the, my aunt, and it was really good. It's a memoir. I don't typically star review memoirs. It feels a little wrong to me. Like, this is someone's true life story. I don't like to star review it. She shares a lot about her journey of finding out that her dad's not her biological dad and her parents weren't very open to that idea because of what happened during IVF. I'm not 100% sure on the terminology, but back in the day, her parents couldn't get pregnant. So they told her parents, like, look, we can mix his sperm with another person's sperm that's successful and maybe that will give them a better rate and I think a better chance at success. And she kind of thinks that that her parents just wanted a kid so bad that they didn't realize what was really happening until later on and then she shares her story of how she did reach out to her paternal father and what went on from there and like i said it was really good very eye-opening i didn't realize all these things happened back in the day and i'm sure in some places they might still happen now and it was just not something i had thought of as a thing that happened i think i did talk about yesterday about I Will Find You by Harlan Coben, but that's this book and it has been two days and I'm still loving it, so I highly recommend it. I'm still thinking about it. After Inheritance, I started and finished, like I said yesterday, Famous for a Living, which if you're watching this, it was published yesterday, which was May 16th. Yeah, yesterday was May 16th. I got my dates right. It was cute. It's rated, reviewed as a rom-com, but it was more of like a contemporary literary fiction. She is a famous and rich through her platform. She kind of loses her platform for a little bit and she goes to the woods and you kind of know where it's going from there. It was not a favorite of mine. I do love the cover and I'm very thankful for Thomas Nelson Books for sending me a copy as long as Uplit reads. It was good. It's also on Libro FM. It wasn't quite the rom-com I thought it would be, but if you go into it a little more open-minded you'll like it more I think it was different not what I anticipated it talks a lot about being addicted to your phones and it was just perfect timing for me because this week particularly I'm trying to keep my screen time to four hours or less each day which is hard between creating content taking pictures texting people engaging with other influencers it's hard to stay under four hours but it's definitely making me prioritize reading time more and with that being said back to the books I finished practice makes perfect last night and it was cute I think I've just read too many romance rom-coms lately but I I did really enjoy this. I liked the ending a lot. I think I liked this more than I liked when in Rome and I just loved how they kept the other characters from when in Rome in it and you got to see a little bit of everything. It kind of just adds to 
this town instead of like, oh, we're just following Annie and Will now. It kept going with Noah and Amelia from the other book. So I did really like that. And this cover, I mean, I even if I didn't like the book, I still want to display the cover because it was so cute. Next, today I did um, Dear Future Mama by Megan Trainer because it looked really cute. And that was just a fun book about pregnancy for future mamas, having a baby. It was just really validating. I'm not even a mama or pregnant or trying to be anytime soon. Fun. I don't know. I really appreciate Megan Trainer. She not only talks about pregnancy and everything, but she also talks about her mental health and her mental illnesses from childhood to now and how she's dealt with that in her career. And it was a lot of good things all in one. And it was just, it was good vibes. I liked it a lot. And I just, like five minutes before filming this, I finished The Do Over by Suzanne Park. I loved that. It, I did it on audio. So like I said, audio always differs how I would actually feel if I sat down and read it because you're spending more time you're probably more critical when you sit down to read I think for me at least but the do-over was cute it's second chance romance and it's not all about romance but it was like second chance career second chance life it was a little bit of everything and the romance was just on the side which I liked I don't I'm not in an all romance mood right now so I did really appreciate the romance kind of being put to the side and it was about an author, her journey back to college. I told you guys about it yesterday, but it was really good. I I would recommend, it was cute and the cover's cute. I don't know if you can see it, but I'll put up on the screen here if you can't, but there it is. I'm reading, they'll never catch us, which I've been reading for a while. It's just never been a priority read. So I get other books in and then I put it down, but it's picking up. I'm at about hundred pages in. I'm hoping to finish it this week. Jessica Goodman, and I have another one of her books. I have The Legacies, which I've shared in one of my book mail videos, but Penguin Random House Razor Bill publisher mailed me The Legacies. So I'm excited to read that after I read this. This is ne They'll Never Catch Us. It's about a town where a few years ago, a few of the cross country female runners from the high school went missing and were brutally murdered. And now you're in the present day and you're seeing the girls on the team. And I'm kind of just waiting for things to be murderous, I guess. But I'm excited. I'm a cross, I was a cross country runner, so it's very nostalgic for me. I also unexpectedly just wanted a new Kindle read. I started Four Found Dead by Natalie D. Richards, which I got through NetGalley. Thank you to the publisher. And I am flying through it. I'm 60% in. I started this morning. I have a goal to finish it tonight. And it's so good. Every chapter ends on a plot twist or a cliffhanger. And it I can't put it down. I have to know what's going on. There's people work at a movie theater. It's the movie theater's last night ever before they tear the building down or re-renovate it or whatever. They're all locked inside. Their phones are locked away in a safe. And they realize that one of them has a gun. And then throughout time, they also find that one, one of the employees are dead. So now they're all safety mode. It's kind of like Five Survive by Holly Jackson. It's one of those type of reads. It also reminds me of Alex Finlay a little bit. Um, just the suspense of it. They're stuck in a space and they're trying to stay alive and all of these things are happening. It's really good. Anyways, tomorrow I'm really excited because I'm gonna take you guys with me to meet Christina Lauren, both of them, at the Oxford Exchange in honor of their new book, The True love experiment. I'm really excited for that. I'm going to be meeting up with a few girls from my in life or in person book club. Then I'm going to Orlando for a little bit this weekend. And then on Sunday, I'm doing a meetup with friends at Tombolo Books. So that's just kind of what's coming up in this video. Other than that, lots of orders running and hopefully some writing every day. All right, I just parked at the Oxford Exchange. So I did bring this copy of Love in Other Words just in case they have time to sign another one. I'm not sure, but we shall see. I, um, I'm just really excited. I've only been to a few in-person author events, so this is my third? Fourth. This is my fourth, and I'm very excited to meet Christina and Lauren. I think it's Christina and Lo, maybe. Um, I love them. I brought book sleeves for all my- the book I'm gonna get, and then this one. I have this new bag that I got for my upcoming Greece trip. It's a backpack to a purse. And it's fashionable, I think. I think it's fashionable. It's lightweight and it's mm, small, medium size, so it's not too big. Oh, I'm breaking out because I started using retinol, the CeraVe retinol resurfacing serum, and I can see a difference with like my um, acne scars and stuff, but definitely I'm getting the acne part. But they say that's how it is for the first two to three weeks, so hopefully that ends before I head to Greece in a week. 
Let's go meet Christina and Lauren. So, Christina Lauren is a combined pending of long-term writing partners and best friends, Christina Haas and Laura Billings. Tonight we'll be celebrating their newest release, The True Love Experiment. Childhood, so that is so special to us. Hello, I am now driving home from the Christina Lauren event. It is almost 11 p.m., but it was so much fun. I got to meet so many new people, bookstagrammers, book lovers. I it was priceless. It was so amazing. <clears throat> oh my goodness. It was a long event. They spoke from about 6.30 to 8 p.m. They, it was a Q&A, so the Kristen Hamill, who's also an author, she does historical fiction. She asked them questions, then Christina and Lauren answered, and then the audience got to ask questions. And I met a lot of people that I got to sit with. We took up the whole second row, but we got great seats. And then afterwards you go and you pick up, or we picked up our signed copy of the True Love Experiment, with their new release that the whole thing was about tonight. We got in line with our copy of the True Love Experiment to have it personalized by Christina and Lauren, as well as any other books that we had brought, which I didn't think of. I brought one other book, Love in Other Words, which is my favorite, but now I really wish I brought at least the Soulmate Equation as well, so that way the Soulmate Equation and the true love experiment matched, but I guess I'll just have to go and meet them again sometime. We got to talk to them a little bit, they personalized our book, and they said if you want post photos, you have to wait until everyone's done getting the book signed. That's why it took so long, but thankfully I was in good company with other bookstagrammers, and it was just so nice. I'm tired, I have an early morning tomorrow. They said it's almost 11 p.m. and tomorrow I'm waking up at 5 a.m. and head to Starbucks. Hopefully get there around 6, 6.30. I'm gonna sit there for about four hours. I have a lot of computer work for Grace by Shan. I have the launch tomorrow, so I have to set up the website for the launch. I have, um, what I'm going for, is to have a book done. That's the plan for tomorrow morning. I'll see you guys then, but just so you know, if there's an author in your town that you even kind of want to go and meet, I highly recommend doing it. I haven't done many of them. This was my fourth one, and I didn't start doing them until this past September, and all of them have just felt, I've just left feeling so good and welcomed and validated. Even just seeing other people who like to read or like the same authors as me, it's so nice. And I keep using the word so, but that's just because I don't quite know how to describe it all. It really is a one-of-a-kind experience and feeling, I don't know, just fangirling all the time. That's what I'm doing. I'm fangirling. Anyway, I'm almost home. I'll talk to you guys in the morning, probably once I'm at Starbucks. Sorry the lighting's bad, but I'm not turning on my car lighting while I drive home. Starbucks chilling out on the couch. It's now almost 1 p.m. I <laughs> I got about five hours of sleep last night, so I'm gonna take a little nap here with Callie. She's too cute to resist. We love Callie. Callie is really the star of the show. She's gonna take a nap. I'm gonna keep reading They Wish They Were Us. That is not the book I'm reading. It is They'll Never Catch Us. Man, I'm amazed by how many times I just mix up book titles that I'm reading. I'm gonna read that until I fall asleep. It is one o'clock, so I'll probably get up around 2, 2.30, and then start working again. Pack up some orders to go out tomorrow. I did a lot of work this morning. I designed a fabric for a book sleeve that says, ban guns, not books. I'm very excited for that. Responded to emails, sent out review discounts, set up stuff for a future market that my mom is gonna host in Central Florida. Callie moved.
And then I met with our sewer, Julie, and we had a great time just catching up, going over some work things and then hanging out at Starbucks. Then I went to Ulta and when I was going to Ulta, I saw that there's a Barnes and Noble that's going to be moving next to where Julie and I meet every so often. So that's a little dangerous, but also very exciting. Going to sleep, work, and then I'll catch you guys up this evening. Thank you. I, <clears throat> ooh. I am heading out for the bookish event at Tombolo Books. I have my white Rothy's. I live and breathe by my Rothy's. And then that's for when USPS picks up packages from our home. Yeah.